Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of life today. You allow us to have another day to praise you and see your glory. Thank you for the love and protection, especially this time of pandemic. Bless us, Father, with your wisdom as we begin our class. Help us to focus our hearts and minds on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we think and listen. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. Lord, we thank you and let your will be done in our lives. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. St. Joseph College Mission We commit to build the St. Joseph College Educative Family SJCEF centered on Christ to form every member into an integral human person in with the gospel values and equipped with excellent quality education and to be an active agent in making your main society. Vision St. Joseph College, a Catholic school, envisions an evangelized and evangelizing community, providing excellent integral education and involvement in social transformation. Welcome to our Technology and Livelihood Education 10 and welcome to our second week of fourth grading or fourth quarter. So I think this is the lesson, the second lesson for the fourth quarter. So before going to proceed, we have to review what happened during the first lesson. So it is the uh, first part of your lesson five on your work textbook, the cleaning living room, dining room, toilet and bathroom which includes the cleaning surface floors furnishings and fixtures we have different kinds of floors we also have cleaning different types of floors how to maintain it and how to daily clean it we also have the dealing with carpet stains and spills then we also tackled about three bucket system then we also done with caring and cleaning and maintaining of the furniture and fixtures. And uh, lastly, we have uh, removing spots and stains in furniture and fixtures. So for this second uh, part of the lesson five, in cleaning, living room, dining room, toilet, and bathroom, we have the contents. First, we have the cleaning toilet bathroom, living room, and kitchen, cleaning supplies, materials, cleansing materials, 
cleaning equipment, different cleaning and sanitizing chemicals. We have making up beds and cots. We also have vacuuming a mattress. Then general procedure in making the bed. Lastly, we are replacing the linens and pillowcase. For this Tuesday uh, session, we only go up to uh, different cleaning and sanitizing chemicals. So let's begin. So what is living room? It is an area that receives and entertains guests. So you can see there, there you can see a sofa, chairs, a table in the center, lamp, shade, and furniture where you will going to receive your clients or your friends or your guests on your house. Then we have the dining room is where the area where meals, both formal and informal, are served. As you can see there, there are chairs for sitting and a table where they put the food and also well lighted, of course. We also have this kitchen. It is an area where food is prepared, cooked, and stored. In the kitchen, you are going to uh, cook the food that's why there are burners and also gas range or oven located there they also uh, observe a sink and faucet for cleaning of foods before we're going to cook it then also it, is, it should be well lighted center table is really optional but uh, it is more convenient if you have there for easy reach for the ingredients in cooking. Toilet and bathroom is one of the busiest rooms in the house, a place where everyone does his or her personal hygiene. Okay. Sometimes we do visualizing ourselves uh, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we set our personal goals in the uh, bathroom or CR. So my one of my friends is lingering at the bathroom trying to figure out his future and foreseeing him or herself in an imagination while pooping. So in a kit in a toilet and bathroom you may observe there a shower, a faucet, a pail for bathing, then also a sink or lavatory, then we have the cubeta or the toilet bowl. So here are examples of some uh, materials or supplies. Cleanliness and orderliness should be maintained in these rooms to create a good impression of the kind of people living in this place. Keeping the kitchen clean and its equipment sanitized is a must because this is where all meals are prepared. So that's in the kitchen. The bathroom is the place where everyone takes a bath and the toilet is the place where you can do your daily natural call or nature's call, like pooping or urinating. So the place must be cleaned and well sanitized daily in order to be germ-free. And in order to do that, we have the, we have here the supplies. We have the scoring, the scoring pad here. Wind pads are used for cleaning the tiles, the wind part. Formica and painted surface countertops and walls, while the white pads or the yellow pads, which is opposite of the green pads, uh, are cleaning painted surface, glass, mirrors, marbles, and porcelain. Wet pads should be or must be washed in rinse after use. You should clean it before and after. We have dusting cloth for dusting wooden painted parts. Use this in dusting cloth. I mean, use this in dusting and cleaning and dry before using. So, if example, dusting cloth should be used all the way for dusting, not that after a while you use this for cleaning like that. So, you only set one kind of material or cloth for dusting. We also have the cleaning towel. It's used for drying bathroom walls and floor tiles after they have been cleaned. Keep cleaning to towels clean and dry before and after the use. So cleaning towel is used for cleaning 
for drying surfaces only. Do not use this for dusting. We also have polishing clothes. Sorry. We have the polishing clothes here. Polishing clothes. So actually, uh, this is the polishing. It's interchange. So this one is the polishing clothes. So for polishing metal surfaces like bathroom fixtures, use highly absorbent clothes for easily polishing. So can you polish clothes for polishing only? Do not use this for dusting or for drying the surfaces in the bathroom. This is the hand brush. All right. So for brushing, this is used for brushing away dust and rough uh, surfaces such as rattan, wicker works, and for cleaning tiles. So let's proceed with a mop and hand and mop handle. This is used for formal flooring mopping. Have two buckets. One bucket is for cleaning the water or for clean water, then the other one is for squeezing the dirty water absorbed by the mop while cleaning. So before when cleaning the floor, we use the three buckets, but now we may use two buckets. So the other bucket for the one bucket we use clean uh use for clean water then the next one is for drying where you squeeze the mop okay so we have the floor and window squeegee it is used to remove excess water from the surface and corners after cleaning the detergent or with detergent solution and rinsing the clean water you can use this also in the aquarium we have the ceiling brooms it's used for removing cobwebs in the ceiling then we have the trash bag that here so uh we don't have a picture of trash bags so trash bags are used to line garbage containers so that the wet garbage does not penetrate into the corners of the surface as of the garbage containers Okay, we have the soft brooms. This used for sweeping. Use soft brooms for all types of smooth floorings. Use thick brooms for rough surface. A thick broom for rough, for smooth surface, the soft broom. All right. We have the buckets. So this is used with mops for cleaning floors, walls, and other parts of the house. Empty and clean bucket after use. Okay. We have the insect sprayer. Insect spray is used for fumigation to eliminate pests and mosquitoes. Spray with doors and window closed. After 15 minutes, open the doors and windows to remove smell and use masks to avoid inhalation of chemicals. You, you can use surgical masks if you want or cloth masks. If you are uh, asthmatic as much as possible, uh, you use double layer of, of mask. Okay, here are some cleansing chemicals to use in cleaning the dining room, bathroom, uh, CR, the bedroom, and the kitchen. First is where the wood polish. This to polish the wood surfaces, leathers, and imitation leather surfaces, and use only when needed. We also have number two, insecticides. This is to eliminate insects or pests and keeping away from food as it is very toxic. So keep it away from children. Also, you have to put it where the children cannot reach it. Okay? We have methylated spirit. For polishing all glasses, surface such as mirror, windows, and etc. Highly flammable and do not use near the flames. Use in small areas one at a time only. So you have to put this also in an uh, area or corner where children cannot reach this or else there is a high risk of injury or poison. Number four, we have the air pressioner. This is used to remove foul odor in guest rooms, comfort rooms, or any areas with foul, foul odors. 
we use a Glade or Lysol for this air freshener. And my favorite scent is orange. Number five, cleanser. Use a clean and all types of washable surface contains chlorine, bleach that kills germs, and scores heavily soiled areas. Keep out of reach of children because it might keep, I'm sorry, and keep tightly closed the container. So, uh, as you can observe that in clinics and in hospital, they always use a chlorine, chlorinated solution for cleaning because it is uh, germicidal and, vi and can kill also viruses. We also have a carpet stain remover. It is used for stain or spot removal on carpets. Number seven, we have disinfectant. Together with spray, used to disinfect toilet bowls, urinal sink, and other areas that are most vulnerable to bacteria contamination. Okay. For a while. The dilution is one cup Lysol to one gallon of water. Then use pure Lysol for urinal toilet bowls. And brush after poor Lysol, then rinse. Keep in safe place out of children's reach. All right. Again, this is poisonous. The disinfectant so you have to put it in a corner where children cannot cannot reach it metal polish for polishing brush copper and metal surface apply polish on clean cloth then wipe cloth and metal still tarnish disappear and comes shiny all right we have the lacquer or paint thinner so thinner, it means used to remove lacquer or paint from the hard surfaces. For example, sa kanang sa ato kamot ko ansiza, sa term ana polish remover, yeah. Kaya kanang colorless ng ibutang sa injung nails, mao nasa ang lacquer. Apply on surface using a cloth towel or scorching pad. Dry and polish after. We have the muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid. It is used for only for removing cement or plastic remains from the floors. Dilution depends on the thickness of cement. Then rinse thoroughly after use. Use hand gloves when using it so that it will not corrode your skin. Eleven is wax stripper. Formulate to break up, loosen, and strip of top old waxes. Please keep this in a safe places, or else children will going to clean and very risky. We have number twelve degreaser, used to remove grease, oil, dirt, carbon, ink, mildews, soils, and waxes. Keep in a safe place. So we have emulsion wax. A buffable, a buffable wax used to resilient floors like vinyl, linoleum, and rubber tiles, and for concrete floors and marbles. For this one, you have to keep with other supplies out of children's reach. We have number 14. We have the dra drain cleaners. This is to expedite draining of clogs and keep in a safe place. So sometimes you use muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid in draining the uh clogs in the bathroom or in the toilet bowl number 15 we also have furnish furniture polisher this contains cleansing conditioner that removes dust smudges and dirt giving furniture a long lasting shine we have 16 we have marble cleaners makes marble shine and resists spots and stains then 17 we have oxal Oxalic acid is a bleach used in cleaning fabrics and in uh, cleaning marbles. One ng ox na ox sa zone rocks kay oxalic acid dahil sa. Okay. Next, we have the cleaning equipment uh, during the first uh, week or lesson for the quarter four. There are overviews of the cleaning materials or 
equipment and use in uh, cleaning the surfaces. Now it is more specific in cleaning the area, uh, whole area. Number one is the vacuum cleaner. It is used to eliminate loose soil and dust particles particles from carpet surface, upholstered furniture, and even hard surface. Dust bags must be emptied daily. So after using, roll back the wire neatly in the back of the vacuum cleaner, then place it on one end of the trolley. So make sure that reach the children or else they are going to uh, misuse this and they are going to use this like a robot. Number two, we have the floor polisher to be used in scrubbing, stripping, and polishing hard floors, surface, and also vinyls, uh, wood, parquet, etc. Use appropriate pad for scrubbing, stripping, and polishing. Give the wax on the floor enough the time to dry before polishing. So you should wait like 15 or 10 to 15 minutes to dry the wax in the floor before you use the floor polisher. We have a carpet sweeper. Para nis mga hotels or big convention areas or event place. Uh, use this to pick up dirt and particles from the carpet. Press the handle and push towards the dirt to vacuum sweep the carpet. Next, we have the hydro vacuum or wet and dry vacuum. It is an all-purpose vacuum for dry and wet surface. It is used also for absorbing water in flooded or wet surface. For example, mga suka or mga vomitus na to sakinan, you can use this. Okay. Carpet extractor. It is designed for dry foam shampooing for carpet. It removes dirt that sticks or penetrates into the carpet layers. Simply twist the hand grips and move the machine gently from one corner to the other one. So, pang social na doon nakalabaw. So next, before we're going to proceed with the different solution, we have to observe or watch this video for you to know and or encounter what ratio and proportion means. So watch and learn. Ratio and its applications. In this module, you will learn about ratio equivalent ratios and some applications of ratio. Mom, I'm thirsty. Please make a glass of orange drink for me. Okay, Vinay. Wait, Mom. I want to see how to make it so that I'll be able to make it for my friends when they come in the evening. Mom, how did you know what to add and how much? It is written on the bottle. To make a glass of drink, take one cup of orange squash. Pour it into a glass, add three cups of water to it. And then mix them well. Your drink will be ready to serve. Mummy, please make one drink for me too. Now, how will you add the squash and water to make the drinks for both of us? See, to make it for one person, we have to take one cup of squash and three cups of water. For two persons, we have to double the quantities of both the squash and water. That means we need to take two cups of squash and six cups of water. Think, if I have to make it for three, then we have to take three cups of squash and nine cups of water. Here, the quantity of water we have added is three times the quantity of squash. How did you find it out? If we divide the number of cups of water by the number of cups of squash, we get three each time. Mummy. It is denoting 3 times 1. Correct. You know, here you are comparing using ratios. What is a ratio? The comparison of two quantities in terms of how many times is called ratio. 
Here, the ratio of squash to water is 1 is to 3 and it is read as 1 is to 3. Using ratio, it is easy to calculate. How? The ratio of squash to water for one person is 1 is to 3. If we have to make it for two persons, then multiply the ratio by 2. Then it becomes 2 is to 6. For three persons, multiply it by 3. That is 3 is to 9. Can you find how much squash and water is to be added for 10 persons? For 10 persons, I have to take 10 cups of squash and 30 cups of water. And I come to know by multiplying the ratio by 10. Here, for all the ratios we have found, we have added water 3 times of squash. That means the ratio is constant here. Such ratios which are obtained by multiplying or dividing by any counting number are equivalent ratios. 1 is to 3 is its lowest form as it can't be further divided. Correct. Now you get it. We have used the squash and water in the ratio of 1 is to 3. For this, can you write the ratio of water to one glass of drink made? I think it is 3 is to 1. No, Vinay, we can't calculate ratio in different units. Here, the unit for water is 3 cups. Then we have to use the same unit for the drink also. One glass of drink contains one cup of squash and three cups of water. That is, four cups are poured into one glass to make one drink. Yes, that is why the ratio of quantity of water to drink is 3 is to 4. And for quantity of squash to drink, it becomes 1 is to 4. So, while writing ratios, first we have to convert different quantities in the same unit. Let's recap. Ratio The comparison of quantities in terms of how many times a quantity is of another quantity is called a ratio. Equivalent ratio Ratios which are obtained by multiplying or dividing by any counting number are Equivalent ratios. A ratio is a comparison between quantities in same measures or units. All right. So that is how uh, you understand about the ratio and proportion. So let us mm. proceed. For the all-purpose cleaners, uh, we have to use to clean all types of washable surface. These are the different cleaning and sanitizing chemicals. All right. Uh, we have the uh, ratio of all-purpose cleaner to the water depends on the type of material. So for the glass panels and mirrors, we have one part of the 100 part. That is one part cleaner to 100 parts of water. Then use a spray or wipe, then rinse and dry with clean cloth. All right. So for steel rubbers, fiberglass or formica, we have 1 is 275, one part cleaner to the 75 parts of water. Then this use spray or wipe, then rinse and dry with clean cloth. Next we have for painted walls, surf surfaces, floors and ceilings, we have one part cleaner to 50 parts of water. Then spray or wipe or mop, rinse and dry with clean cloth or mop. So again, keep in, in safe place or out of children's reach. So for example, on this guys, sa kanin mga proportion, for example, kanin one part cleaner to 100 parts of water. For example, 
na akay 1 liter. 1 liter of water. So, na may 100 parts ha, no? Giingon. So, 100, I'm sorry, there is 1 liter, so 1,000 milliliter. 1,000 milliliter, then you should divide it on how many parts. Okay, so divide it by 100. So, equals, sorry ha, 1,000 divided by 100. 10. The result is 10. So, per part of the uh, solution is 10 ml or milliliter. So, per part man, so one part cleaner to 100 parts of water. So, so 100 part or 1000 milliliter nimo, 10 ml is the uh, Part cleaner, then kanang then mix it. Then here, for example, for rubber, for rubber, steel, then formica, we have one part cleaner and seventy-five parts water. For example, you have also uh, five hundred, uh, five hundred ml or milliliter divided by 75 the 75 man ang parts dila open number of parts so it's 6.66 so let's say 7 ato i run off 7 so 7 ml of the sa 500 nga ml nga water 7 ml is the cleaner now the report sa uh, cleaner all purpose cleaner Used for wall surface, floors, and ceiling. For example, na akay uh, 700 ml water. So, sa 700 ml water divided into given number of uh, parts, that is 50. So, the answer is 14. So, there are 14 ml sa 700. Uh, one part is 14 ml. So, one part ra ba ng cleaner? So, 14 ml ra ang cleaner isago sa 700 nga uh, ml nga water. Okay. Then, spray or wipe ma pwede sa garb. Okay. Next. May daghan. So, yung tuon ha. So, next is wax stripper or remover. This is to loosen or break up strips of old waxes, finished and Sealers. For stripping off polymer sealer finish or heavy wax buildup, one part wax stripper to four parts of water. For example, you have uh, 100 ml water. So divided it to four. Okay, four parts man ang given. 100 divided by four is 25. So 25 ml ka wax stripper, stripper nga or wax remover nga solution kay one part man of four parts okay so for unusual stripping of wax build up on floor con corners and edges use one zero pure concentrated wax stripper still be dili sa gulan of water pure jesiza again safety first Three, disinfectant. Use to disinfect toilet bowls and urinals. A, disinfect and sanitize bowls, toilet bowl seats all over with one cup disinfectant to one gallon of water. This one is specific. One gallon, one cup. And disinfectant. Disinfect inside of toilet bowls and urinals with pure disinfectant. Do this for both as these areas already contain water. Then keep in safe place out of children's reach. Number four. Other ways of sanitizing kitchen or appliances. A. For a deep fat fryer, sanitize by putting vinegar. That's one is to 30 parts or one part of 30 parts. For example, na kay one liter of uh, 
water. Okay. 1 liter of water divided by pila ka buo, pila ka parts. So, 30. Okay. So, 3.33 nga ml ang imo isago sa 1 liter. So, boil, drain, rinse, then let it dry. Sanitize dishes, glassware, and flatware with hot water that is 110 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. Then, C, sell soda to, to the clog sink. Kanang mga koan, liquid sosa. With 4 ounces, 4 ounces to 2 gallons of water. Then use detergent to sanitize sink, side sinks of sink drain boards and working tables. Waste disposal, all garbage should be taken out every day. So, for your attendance, on our group page, please uh, comment there uh, a, a picture of your favorite dining, I mean, sorry, favorite living room design or your inspiration or anything that you want, uh, any, any look you want for your dining set. No, living set. I mean, living room. So, yung sala. So, picture of it. Then, i kanang comment sa announcement kato sa group page nato sa Facebook. We will continue our lesson on Thursday. Either it will go into virtual or it is going to be like this. Pre-recording, depending on my swab result. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, that's all. Please do your attendance. And reminder, your exam is due last, when, last Monday. So, if ever you pass or submitted your exam, beyond that, there will be a succeeding deduction, points deduction. So, do not uh, let the chance slide for you to, be to, for you to have a... Uh, no deduction. So, dapat on time. And, uh, see you on Thursday. Bye.